Hi, everyone, and welcome to Creative Chelsea. Today, I'm excited to share with you my third set of alternative cards using the May 2023 Paper Pumpkin Kit called Exploring in Color. If you would like to watch me unbox this kit and create these cards, click on the playlist in the top right corner. This fun outdoor themed kit creates nine handmade cards. There are enough supplies to make three of each of these intended cards. Today, I am sharing with you two cards that use sections of the card bases in the kit. You can use any size sections or shapes with these ideas. The first card shows how you can layer the section over a larger white base and stamp a greeting to make it look like a Polaroid film. The second card shows how you can create an opening just large enough for this section, giving it a peekaboo look. If you are new to Paper Pumpkin and are interested in getting your own monthly crafting kit, you can subscribe using the link in the description below. I would love to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator and help you with any questions you may have about Paper Pumpkin or Stampin' Up! products. You can contact me through my email address listed at the bottom of the description of every video. So both of these cards come from the front of the card base that has the canoe in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around the canoe and then I'm also going to cut a section here and that's the section that I've used on this card. Okay, you can see that there. So let's first begin actually by cutting this section here. And I think we just cut it at three inches. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and line up that left edge with my three inch mark and cut. And that's going to give me a piece that's one and a quarter inches for this copper clay card. And I'm going to cut it down by removing just a little bit from the top. I'm going to cut it to five and a quarter inches. And then that piece will be ready for my card. From there, I'm going to trim this section at three inches. And that will give me that fun Polaroid look that I'm going to use on my boho blue card. And then with this piece, you're welcome to use it for something else. I'll, I might use it for an alternative project that I will share later this week. So now that we've cut those pieces from the card base, I'm just going to work on one card at a time. I'm going to begin with this boho blue card. The background I have used is an embossing folder and you can use any embossing folder. This one comes from the trio of embossing folders that you can find online at stampinup.com and I will link the link below in the description if you're interested in getting it. So I've just added it to the inside and then I'm going to run that through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. One thing that I love about embossing folders is it gives that little bit of texture that you want, but it doesn't make your card feel busy. So you still can get a really simple design, but it really steps it up so that it doesn't feel blank or boring, but it also doesn't um, make you need to add a lot to your cards. It just is a nice um, texture that you can add to behind your elements. So I wanted this to be a little bit distressed, so I'm going to go ahead and take a coordinating Stampin' Right marker. This one is my Boho Blue. And on the brush tip side, I'm going to flick on some splatters. There we go. You can see those on my card base. The next thing I want to do is add this element from the kit, but I wanted it to feel like it extended across my card and it is quite short. So to get that elongated look, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this in half and I'm going to separate it behind my main element. And one important part of doing something like this is you want to make sure that they're lined up because if you place them crooked, it's not going to look like one um, joined piece. So I'm going to use my grid paper and a ruler 
and maybe about, I don't know, three fourths of an inch to an inch from the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Just you decide what you like. I'm going to place these pieces. Oh, good thing that's going to get covered up. Add a little bit of liquid adhesive or a different type of adhesive and place it so that it's about a quarter of an inch or so away from the edge. I'm going to try to use two hands here so I don't have that same thing happen. So I'm using my ruler to help me keep it lined up. So I'm placing it right along the top of my ruler. There we go. Give it a little more space. There. So you can see how that's lined up now and it goes all the way across. So let's go to our Pol Polaroid film and I've got my square that I'm going to add to a piece of basic white cardstock. It is just slightly larger. So if this was three inches, this is probably three and a quarter inches by four inches is what I think I did. Yep, and that's going to give me a little bit of space at the bottom for a greeting. And I want to use this, it doesn't matter where you're going, it's who you have beside you greeting. I'm gonna ink that up in the copper clay Stampin' Spot that came in the kit. And then I'm going to go ahead and center that in that bottom section and stamp. So it looks something like this. Here I have 16 inches of the linen thread from the kit and I'm going to wrap that around the base of this picture and tie a bow and then add some dimensionals to the back. And then we're going to place this on our card base at a slight angle. And I'm going to kind of mimic this angle. I don't want to go opposite of it, but I don't really have enough room to go as wide with it. So we're just going to go right there over that gap that was created. And then I also have the compass from the kit and I'm just going to pop that on near the um, ribbon or the bow from the linen thread. And that card is all done. Super quick, simple, colorful, beautiful textures. I love this card. Let's go ahead and move to card number two. So for card number two, we're also going to use an embossing folder to give that nice subtle texture without having our card to be really busy. So I have a piece of copper clay cardstock that is five and a quarter inches by three inches. It's going to give me one inch gap once I cut it. But before I cut it, I want to emboss it. Now with our last card, we just did a plain embossing. But for this card, I wanted to um, show you how you can add ink to your embossing. And because we've got the copper clay, that's why we're going to use the copper clay cardstock. So you just take your ink spot and rub it gently over the top of your embossing folder. And you know it's the top because it has the Stampin' Up! logo here. And then I like to actually line it up on the opposite side like that. And then you can close it right over that. And you're going to run this through your machine and it's going to press that ink into your cardstock and give you a really gorgeous texture. So I'm going to show you the side with the ink. You can see that that ink is in there. It's nice and dark. And then here's the side without the ink. So you can kind of see that the ink just gives it a little bit more um, dimension. It's just a really beautiful look. So after we've embossed it, we're going to take it and we're going to cut it. And you do want to make sure you have a nice sharp blade. I'm going to cut this on this side. I'm measuring it at three fourths of an inch and I'm going to cut that all the way through. And that's going to be my gap. Now you could create a card like this with any shape. You could use a circle and use like maybe a punch. And then that would be your gap and create, add something behind it 
underneath that circle. Um, you could use a square. So it's really versatile and you could use it with lots of things. So what I wanted to do was distress this opening. And so I'm using my bone folder and I'm pressing on that edge where my um, landscape is going to be. And I'm going to create this, this rough edge right there, kind of like it's been torn or pulled apart. Okay. The next step is I'm going to actually add my embossed papers down first. And I'm going to place uh, dimensionals on the outside edge so that I can slip in my landscape after they have been added. And then I can add more dimensionals for support. So for example, I've got dimensionals here on the left. Here's my roughed up edge, my card base. It's opening on the right side. And I'm going to add this with a slight border all the way around as if it was a full four inch by five and a quarter piece. And then I'll do the same on this side, completing the opening. Okay, so now you can see how I have that opening there and it's easy for me to slide it in. So I'm going to take a little bit of liquid glue right there in the center and then add this. I think I'm going to go from this side. So add this right underneath and then lift this up and add that. And then you just want to make sure that the bottom and top edges are connecting across so that you don't have one that's a little lower or one that's a little higher. Okay. So then you get this really fun look. You can distress these edges a little more if you want. And then add a couple more pieces of dimensionals to support that edge there. Just like that. Look how cool that is. I love that copper clay color with those beautiful landscape colors. The last thing I'm going to do is stamp a greeting on this circle. I cut this circle out from basic white cardstock with one of the stylish shapes dies. If you have a different shape or if you have a circle punch or maybe a different punch that you like, you can use any shape for this greeting. I'm just going to ink it up in that copper clay ink and stamp it right there in the center. And then I'm going to add this with dimensionals as well. If you have any of the linen thread left over, you could definitely add a bow to this. Um, I ran out of mine. Um, and I think that this card is nice and simple and doesn't really need too much. Just place it right there on the left. You can place it up high if you want or near the bottom like I have. And your card is all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me create these two fun cards that uses sections from the landscapes on the card bases. If you are interested in written instructions or close-up images, you can visit my blog, creativechelsea.com. If you would like to subscribe to get your own paper pumpkin kit, please use the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.